Hello, everyone. My name is Tiffany. I'm the Tipsy Artist. Today, we are painting this beautiful sunflower cross. I'm doing a lot of Easter-inspired paintings right now. So this is the example of what we do when we meet in studio. And then I also have a lovely painting kit with this in a smaller size, a 9 by 12. And so the painting kit comes with everything that you need, and you can find everything on our website at tipsyartist.com. And if you do have all of the supplies, then we also will have the digital trace and that little, there's like a little digital kit with everything you need there too. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started with our class, but I did want to give you a good look at this and say hello to everybody from the studio because we're going to be switching camera views and I'll give you a much closer uh, vision of everything that we're doing because we have a lovely uh, camera just that sits right over where I work. So we're going to go ahead and switch to that right now as soon as I get my little keepers on and I can see y'all. All right, so where am I? Here we go. Oh, uh, USB. Okay. All right. Let me get this painting in front of me. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, the tools that we have here. So again, uh, the painting kit that I have comes with all of your supplies. So pretty much everything with the exception of the water. So you'll have everything that you need, but it comes with your canvas and the traceable and the transfer paper, your brushes, permanent marker, pencil, your lovely paint. And then when you go to open it up, like you'll see, your supplies that come with this and then your kit will be brand new like that too. All right, let's go ahead and talk about this transfer process. So what you're going to want to do first is this is a vertical uh, design. So we're going to go ahead and place the transfer paper in the vertical position. And I always just tape right up here at the top, only at the top. I love for this to be free so that I can lift up and check my work as I go. Really important on that. You wanna make sure that you get everything traced before you lift this off. All right, then when I've got my transfer paper down, uh, let's talk about crucial details on that. So you wanna make sure that the blackest, shiniest side faces the canvas and then the duller side, which is a bit more of like a dark charcoal gray, that's gonna face you, that's gonna face up. So that's gonna be really important or you're not gonna be able to transfer anything. So you want that real sh uh, shiny side, shiny waxy side that faces down. All right, so that's in place. Then we're gonna go ahead and tape the design. Now let's talk about placement on that. So the end of our canvas is right here. And so you wanna go ahead and line up the end of the design to the edge of the bottom of the canvas. So you've got a lot of room up here this is just going to be like clouds and things like that. But so that's gonna be good placement. Then what we wanna do is we're gonna use the pencil that comes with your kit and we're just going to draw right over the top of every single line. So this does take you know a little bit of time and I've worked ahead a little bit. I'm just gonna do a little bit here just to kind of give you an idea just kind of play in here, but basically just trace, trace, trace. Now, the importance of checking your work. So let's take a look. We're all set. It's all done. I did work ahead a little bit. I'm going to talk about uh, the darkness because that comes in with our permanent marker because initially it's going to look just like a pencil line on there, more like this. It's going to be very light. Uh, so I, I've checked really well. Oh, you know what? One more thing. Let me talk about this. So I include sometimes a little bit of shading uh, that just kind of gives you a reference as you get closer to that step, you don't forget, oh, I've got a little bit of like a shadow in there, darkness. So you can do a little bit of shading even though you're just really gonna paint over the top. But you can do that just kind of as a visual reminder. And when I do that, I use the side of the pencil and I just kind of do a quick little burnishing down just like that. Okay, and then let's take a look. So that'll look just like pencil on your canvas. All right, so I am done 
I'm going to go ahead and remove this because I checked and checked and checked and I promise I got it all in there. All right, now let's talk about the permanent marker. So this really helps beginners a lot so that you don't lose all your hard work and your trace. Some of the elements I don't want to hard line around, like for example, when you've got these really soft pounce effect with the flowers, I want to go ahead and leave that light. So I left that light, but everything else I did kind of a hard line around. Definitely the cross and I did the sunflower and the leaves since that will serve you and just kind of act as a shadow underneath the paint. So we are set up and done with these two uh, tools. So I'm gonna place these off to the side. All right, let's give a quick little intro on our brushes. All right, we have mama brush and then we have little buddy and then we have little bit. All right, we've got a little napkin. We've got our paint plates out. And of course I've got some paint out. I've actually already used this for one painting today. Kind of gives you an idea of it's pretty long lasting. So I'm able to do you know, several paintings with the kit. So that's nice. Uh, so you, you know, once you get done with the, whatever painting you buy it for, you'll also have plenty left over to play with too. So that's also lovely. All right, um, so let's see here. Oh, and I just put out a little extra titanium white in the beginning. Okay. Uh, so again, the water is the only thing you're going to have to go and get, you know, by yourself. I don't have a container or the water for you. So you're going to want to take care of that too, before you get started. Okay. Um, let me make sure my camera, yeah. Okay. So I've got a time-lapse going over here. Let me make sure I've got that running and it is going. All right. All right. We're going to get started with our sky, our beautiful sky. Okay, so I'm going to be using some primary cyan blue. Oh, and typically when these are brand new, there's going to be a little silver foil lining there. So you want to lift that off. I'm going to go, I already did that because I was using this paint kit earlier today. So I've got my little dollop of primary cyan blue. Actually, I'm going to do a little bit more just in case. Then I'm going to use some Viridian. This will bring in that teal quality, a little bit of turquoise to it. All right, um, I think that's about it. Okay, so I'm gonna take the Mama brush. Your brushes are probably gonna be a little bit stiff since they're brand new. So I like to put them into the water just a little bit and then dry them off, do a little pat pat dry. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a nice big dollop of the white. And then we're gonna do a little corner of that blue, a little corner of that pretty, and we're gonna mix that all together. And there I have it. There's that beautiful turquoise right away. A little bit more white to it, a little bit more blue. I'm gonna get a bigger mix. We have a lot of this to do, so I don't wanna run out. All right, lovely. We can add a little bit of water to that, make it a bit more fluid. And then I'm gonna to start to do like a crisscross into the background here. Give it a little scoop. All right, and then as we're placing this onto the canvas, I wanna go ahead and turn my brush a little bit over to the side. That's gonna help me get really good coverage here. And then don't forget about a little bit of water as you go to help make that paint a little bit more fluid. It'll help it flow into the pores of the canvas. Let's mix up some going. Crisscrossing back and forth. It's gonna give us some nice texture. Let's cross back and forth. And when we get near that edge, I'm going to turn the handle a little bit more. Just hold it like you hold a pencil. It'll help you have that nice line edge. Do a little bit of cutting work here. 
And once I'm done with those straight lines that cut in, I'm going to continue to create that same texture that we had initially. So I'm going to go back to that little crisscross stroke just to give it that same texture in the background. I'm going to get right near the edge here. Do that little cut in right next to the petal. Head in right next to that edge. And right next to this one. And up a little bit of water. Cut in there. I'm going to cut in here. This cross bag. I see any little white peekaboo. I'm going to kind of pull up over here so I can see. Yeah. Good, a little bit more right there, and then we're going to take this all the way down until we do a little bit of an overpaint there. So, I've got a lovely little pounce effect that I'm going to do to bring in those flowers from the base, and then come right next to this little sunflower. A little bit of cut in there. If you need to use a smaller brush in here for your cut in, you can certainly do that. A little bit of cut in there. In here. And just throw that crisscross back and forth. A little bit more mixings. A little bit more water. We'll get next to that little cluster of flowers that's going to come in. Give me a little cut in. A bit more delicate in here as we do the cut in. Stop right into there. I'm going to put a little bit more water thin out. I think I did a bit more of just a wash underneath. Oops. So my leaves are just going to bleed through here and I'll basically just kind of pounce right in over the top. I'm going to go ahead and take this sky all the way to the base. Okay. And then Oh, 
Okay, get that in. Now I'm gonna give a little look see. Make sure I got all my little peekaboos covered by peekaboo. I mean little bits of white canvas peeking through that I didn't get coverage on. So I'm just gonna check. And just kind of feather out that stroke. Oh, there's a little bit right there. All right, and then just kind of crisscross it out back and forth to get good coverage. Okay, now. Oh boy, I'm getting some light coming in. Man, I thought that I was, we're in spring now, and so I didn't think the winter light would hit me low. Hold on a second, I'm gonna close the curtain. I didn't quite take <laughs> okay. I got one more, one more thing of shades to cover. Okay. I think that's gonna be the money right there. No? <laughs> what coloration? Oh man, I got one more window. Okay, thank you. Hold on. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm so lost. That's light out of my control right there. Okay. Well, I've I've closed every curtain and I can't close anymore. So we're just gonna have a little bit of light peeking in at the top. All right. So as a matter of fact, now I feel like I didn't even I need to get the right area. So I'm probably at a much later time of day than I normally do. So I feel like it's got me thrown off a little bit. Okay. I'm in my sunroom. So it's typically lovely, but sometimes with filming, it can create some very interesting lighting challenges. So, okay. So I'll be sure to timestamp this to tell myself, to tell you, hey, you might want to just fast forward when I get the light figured out. All right, so I've got my brush cleaned up and I'm gonna go ahead and leave those there for just a second. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and start to paint into our wooden cross here. Let's turn this a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and place in some cadmium orange. This is how we're gonna make our brown. And then I would love to have some Mars Black. We'll do a little follow-up of that. And then I want some cadmium yellow. Okay. And let's see, let's go ahead and take Little Buddy. All right, we're going to mix up some brown. So we take the orange and the black. We're going to mix those two together. That's going to give us some brown. You can add more black to darken the brown. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and place this. Let's grab a little and place this into my cross. And I'm gonna do a thin line by holding the brush hand, just like you hold a pencil. And we can do that little bit of cutting there.
I'm going to cut in one around those little petals. Oh, and then I do a little touch of the cadmium yellow, and we're just going to go a little bit across here, a little bit across here. So little vertical poles. And using a more light, a very light hand, just kind of pull that cadmium yellow down into that wood. It creates a little bit of a look of that wood grain. And I'll add a little bit of white here. That brown. And we're going to do a little bit of a pull in there. A little bit of white with my brown. And just a little bit of coal, vertical pull in there. That gives some nice little wood grain texture. Let me go ahead and kind of lift that up. Okay. All right, now we're going to start on the other side. So we're going with that darker brown. And we're going to work this into the sides. Still using our little betty brush. I have to mix up some more brown, more black and orange. Before we came between those little petals there. And go back into some of those vertical poles. Get some of that little bit of texture. I'm going to squeegee off the excess of that darker brown. Push a little bit of white. And over here. Lighten it up a little bit. And then we're going to do horizontal poles here, right over the top. Creates a little bit of that texture. You can also grab a little bit of that cadmium yellow. Do a drag of that in there, too. All right. Really pretty. Go back into that darker brown. We'll place it here on the other side. Do a little bit of a outside line here. Okay. This is a tight little corner here. I'm going to go ahead and take my little bit brush, do a little twirl into that dark brown, and I'm going to go ahead and fill in. It's a little bit too tiny. My little buddy. And then I'm going to do a quick little drag into that light brown. It's kind of lightly. Do a little bit of texture over that just to kind of help it. Softly blend in with the rest here. And then it's out. And then do a little pattern here. And we'll look at lighter brown. And kind of easier, I think, to pull from a different side. So I'm going to just do a little pull from here. Just little horizontal pulls. Get that little bit of texture. Get that look of like old wood over the top. All right. And then we're going to make a line on the edge here, all the way down. This is our dark brown, still using the little buddy brush. And remember, our dark brown is mixed up with the black and the orange. Mm 
All those little leaves in here. Let's go and put this in. Let's fill this in. Around those little vines. All right, now we want to go pick up a little bit more of that white, mix that in with our brown. And then we'll go ahead and start to make little vertical poles with it. Just going to kind of work using the vertical line of the brush since we don't really have the same ability to just pull out into the side. We don't have the same room. We're kind of carrying around those little leaves. Yeah, kind of gives that old motherwood look. Okay, I do. I'm going to do it. A little bit more of that wood grain texture. Mm -hmm. A little bit of that texture. All right, now I'm going to come back in with a little bit more of the black line work. So I rinsed out here. I'm going to go in with this pure black. I'll push into that. And then I still see my little line peeking through there. So I'm just going to do a hard black line over that. Do that little border. And a Here, a little bit more of that line that just kind of follows along the border here. Very pretty. Rinsed out, we're going to dry off. Okay, we're going to start to work on our sunflowers now. So we'll need some primary yellow. And we still have a little bit of our cadmium yellow. Let's go ahead and get a little bit more just in case. And we're going to start to use the little bit brush for this. And so I'm going to go ahead and mix up a little bit of that cadmium yellow with a bright primary yellow. And a little bit of white to this too. And a little twirl. And we're going to start to work into our sunflower now. Again, this is our bright primary yellow, cadmium yellow. You can also add a little touch of white to that. It helps it cover better. 
Our permanent marker is still bleeding through, which is good. That's going to help us define our petals. We don't lose that petal shape. We'll work back in with the little touch of brown to help accentuate that here in a little bit. And we'll come to each little petal here. Make sure and get all those petals and then use the tip of the brush to go into that little tiny point. Do a little pull down and a little bit of a firm press and a curve around those petal shapes. Let's just continue that one. That's a little leaf under there. So I'm not gonna actually almost paint that in, but that's gonna be a little leaf. Right. Let's go ahead and I'm get these guys too. I'm just going to do a little touch into these little petals. And do a little twirl to get your the tip of your brush a little bit thinner as so you work into these. A little twirl helps load the brush, but it also twirls it into a nice soft point. Sign. Any tiny little petals, and it kind of feels like a little parentheses, parentheses to make that little shape. Here. 
for purposes, purposes of healing and healing. All right, and then we can start to pick up some darker highlights here. So let me grab some more cadmium orange. And we still have a lot of our cadmium yellow, which we're gonna to start to use a lot of that. So we're gonna do a little sweep here. We pull over the top of each little petal. We're starting at the center and just kind of do a quick little pull with that cadmium yellow. Each little pull will have a little bit of a soft curve to it. As echoing this the same curvature of each little petal here. Very pretty. And then we'll do the same thing here, just another little layer over the top of each little petal. We're gonna have a really light hand. We want a lot of that cadmium yellow to just gently rest on the top of the surface. And make sure you kind of, as you continue to go around in a circle, just kind of hold that brush a little bit more like parallel to the canvas. That'll give you a light, gentle hand. It allows, allows a lot more of that paint to just rest gently on the surface area. Really touch it. All right, and over here. You have just really turning the handle more. It's like facing the side of the canvas. That'll help give you a much more gentle hand. Allows a lot more texture to rest on the surface area. Now I'm gonna go into a little bit of that orange. And I'm gonna do a little accent around the edges of the petals, help accentuate those. And then do that soft little curve, follow the edge of the petal. Let a little twirl into that orange. And we're just going to do tiny little touches of that around the outside here as well. And again. And again. And Let's go ahead and go back into that brown. We can leave all that orange on there, it won't matter. And we're just gonna do a little tap, tap, tap around the edge here. And we'll tap, tap, tap in a circle. All right here, a little tap, tap, tap around the edge. And that gives some nice texture. We need to just work in that brown a little bit of time. And 
more pretty, and I'm going to do a little bit of that light in there. Just kind of lightly tap right in that middle. And a little bit of the accent. And then I'm also going to use a little bit of this yellow with the brown. And we're just going to do a little tiny tap, tap, tap out the way around. And create that little donut shape for that texture. A little bit of cavity in there. And just a tap, tap, tap around a little bit of the way. Do it while the brown's nice and wet so that you can get that nice texture mix in between the two. Okay. And then we're going to do a little pearl into that brown. And then we're going to go ahead and get a nice little, just have a little bit more yellow in that brown. Well, kind of let me go around here and do a few little touches. I got a lot more of that yellow in with the brown. Do a twirl. Just going in the edges. This is softening up any of that leftover, a little bit of permanent marker kind of showing through. So we're just going over it with that yellowish brown. And it creates a nice little shadow in between each of the little petals, too. And a little bit of water in there. A little twirl. All right, very pretty. And take a little bit more of that yellowish brown. And we're just going to do a little, a few little taps around the edges here. All right, and then we're going to go back into that darker brown. I don't even rinse out because it's just the same color, so we'll just start it a little bit with the black. And then we're going to do that little tap, tap, tap in the center. And when we tap, it gives a nice little texture around that circle edge. We'll tap, tap, tap. Nice texture there. Tap in here. Tap, tap, tap. A little bit brush, a little bit. And I didn't do the edge of the circle. I'm going to make some light. Yeah, but it is warming up in my center. I'm going to take off my jacket. Okay. I'm going to do Okay. All right, let's see. All right, let's go ahead and start to work on some really pretty little leaves. So we still have a lot of help over here. We've got our white, we have a little bit of blue, a little bit of green, but we're gonna grab some more. Bring it in. And then we're going to grab some. Bright yellow cream. So I'm going to use my little bit brush and I'm going to take some of that Viridian 
and the primary cyan blue. You should have some still on your plate, but just in case, there it is. I'm going to mix those two together. A little bit of white. Okay, that titanium white. Just a little twirl in there. And then we're going to go ahead and paint it and have some water. Help it flow. Go into just a leaf here. Take it to a little bit of a point. Give it a twirl. And then we lay it about down. Let it bring that meridian, kind of touch into that, get that kind of dark in there. And we do the high touches of that. We'll be painting into those shapes that we had there initially. All right. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this guy down here. And a little bit of the brown, too. Bring a little bit of water. Bring it that brown. Bring it that meridian that we had mixed up. And a little touch of a leaf here and here. It looks like you got to a little point and kind of rounded out for a fullness. A little parentheses and a parentheses. And these little shapes, you're just kind of filling into that little trace that we had. Filling that in. All right, now I want to lighten up a little bit so I'm going to grab a little bit more of this bright yellow green. I need a little bit of that brown green. Okay. Hmm. A lot more white that took me to boost. I need a little bit more of that sage green. I'm going to do a little twirl. Yeah, I'm just going to start to fill in the rest of that little bit of green. Little Soft parentheses and take it to a little fine point. We're going to do a little swish running through here. Have a little bit of water, a little twirl. Take it to a little bit of green. Take a push into that shape with that little point.
Mm, a little point right here. And on the bottom. A little line all the way down. Do that out a little bit. I'll grab a little bit more of the brown. Mix that in. A little pearl. And then we're going to lightly go around on those little shapes and just kind of soften that up a little bit. A little bit of a light blend between the two. A little push of that brownish green in there, a little push, a little push, just kind of soften it a little bit. A little bit of water. Back into that brownish meridian. I'm going to go over this a little bit too. And another little layer of that. So again, this is our brown and our viridian. A little bit of that white with that turquoise too. And just we'll give another little cut up of that. And I'm just kind of echoing the same shape that we made. A soft curve right over the top, another coat of paint. And again, this is that little touch of brown with that meridian and that turquoise. And then just kind of softly going over, echoing on the outside that same shape and just doing a light little pull with it. A little echo of the same shape and just kind of doing a soft little touch right over the top. I'm going to go and rinse out. And then I'm going to go ahead and go into a little bit of that teal and that turquoise. Let's grab a little bit of water. And we're just going to do some real soft, like vertical, I'm sorry, horizontal pulls into that arm of the cross. So I'm going to go around to the other side. Just little light drags. And then same thing up here, little, little accents of color. Like that. All right, now we're going to get some beautiful... Actually, you know what? I'm going to do clouds first, and then I'm going to work down to the flowers. That way I won't keep putting my hand in that. All right, so I'm going to get, I've got my white, and let's grab a little bit of some primary magenta. And then I want a little bit of black nearby, so you get just a teeny amount here. And so on. Grab some white, Put that gray nearby. All right, so we can start to work in some of these really pretty clouds in here. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of I've got my light gray here, a lot of white, little tiny amount of the black. And I'm just gonna start to make a little bit of a shape here. I'm gonna start to do a little bit of a pounce. White.
some soft curves here. And then I'm just going to pounce on the side of the brush. This is my little buddy brush here. Give it some texture and keep going into some white. Just tap it into that. Tap, tap, tap. And a little bit more white and tap, tap, tap. I'm tapping around the edge here. I'm going to tap out to a little bit of a tears. Or you can keep it more curvy. Clouds are all different shapes, so it depends on what you like. And then as my brush kind of becomes a little bit more of like a dry brush, you can kind of work that around the edge. And that faint dry brush look really kind of serves you well and gives that soft little faded muted look because there's a lot less pain in there. You can just kind of tap more of that dry brush around the edge. You definitely want to just keep tapping until you kind of run out of paint. And then it's more of that dry brush that's kind of working around the edge here. And then you can pick up a little teeny amount of that uh, primary magenta. And you can do a little tap in here to make a little fine accent in the cloud. And just kind of... So much softer paint that it mixes in with all that gravity. Certainly, kind of a little more white. Just kind of tap that in over the top. Want that highlight? And a little more texture. Mm -hmm. Lots of tapping. Lots of repetition. This is a great way to release some stress, too. I'm going to pop this yellow a little bit off. Don't really mind the other colors that much, but. Okay. So a little bit more of the white here. I'm going to come in on this side. More cloud comes in through here. And again, we're usually a little bit fuller, and then I kind of just taper them a little bit. A little touch of it in there. And it's just a lot of repetition. And then a little baby one here. 
I kind of change the angle on the end of the brush because it kind of gives you a different little bit of a formation. All right, so lots of beautiful clouds in there. Looks looking really good. And then we're going to start to work in those beautiful flowers. And the technique is very similar, but it's almost in reverse. We're going to pour on a lot of primary magenta, that hot pink first, and then we're going to tap in a little bit of white over the top. So let's start with a lot of that primary magenta. And we're going to just start to place this over the top, and you can just feel it is just that easy to just pass, pass, pass. This whole area. We get all of that very saturated in there. And then while that is still wet, I mean, okay, I just tap over the top. See, now you're going to get that really, there's that texture. It's a little bit flat before, but you start pouncing in the white, it really starts to come to life. Mm 
Very pretty, and let's do the same thing here on the other side. I need some more to get loaded up here. One. Mm. 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 Some matches at that level. A little flower formation really start to come to life with just a little bit of white kind of tapped in over the top. Same thing here, you can just add a little bit more white to give it more formation. Also, you come in a little bit darker. You need some of that to kind of pop out over the top again. And just for fun, let me show you a little bit of orange too. So you could kind of put in a little bit of orange to kind of peekaboo in there. That's really pretty. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't like that. It's really pretty. Mm -hmm. Maybe have a few little orange flowers kind of peeking through, a little bit of a coral accent. Mm. All right. So that is really lovely. And the only other step I have to do, like I'm rinse out here, I'm showing one other thing we can do. Looks like little nails in the background. So I'm going to take the end of the brush, we're going to dip into the black. And we're just going to do a tiny little touch right there on either side, and right there, and right there. And again, just kind of looks like little nail holes. One, two. All right, and we are done. Then you can sign your masterpiece, but I'm definitely going to have to wait and do mine later because this is all wet. And I like to do mine with the permanent marker. So you can sign with that, but again, I would highly recommend letting all this set up and dry and then sign with this at the very end. It's typically done in the bottom right-hand corner. So that is it. This has been a beautiful painting. I've had so much fun with y'all and I'll leave the link below for our painting kit, but thank you again so very much for painting with me today. Y'all have a beautiful week and I'm sending much love to y'all. Toodles. Love y'all. Bye.